rise today in opposition to H.R. 1187. Uh, with all due respect to my good friends from California and Illinois, uh, we've enjoyed a robust discussion and debate on this, uh, what I would argue is a very important topic. The statutory mission, Mr. Speaker, of the Securities and Exchange Commission is to protect investors, maintain fair and orderly and efficient markets, and facilitate capital formation. Its mission, though, is not to reduce carbon emissions. Its mission is not to solve climate change. Now, those may be laudable public policy objectives, but they are best handled by the Congress or other federal agencies. This is simply not the job of the SEC. This bill is unfortunately the next episode in the Democrats' saga to weaponize financial regulation to achieve partisan social and environmental goals. Congressional Democrats and the Biden administration know that they cannot pass the Green New Deal and other extreme far-left policy priorities through a Democrat-majority Congress. And so they're corrupting an independent federal financial regulator to do their bidding. The majority claims that this bill is an effort to improve corporate governance, when in reality it is a thinly veiled attempt to open a back door to achieve their socialist wish list and cut off financing to legal but politically unfashionable industries that they despise. And the result will be higher energy costs for the American people, a regressive energy tax on the people in this country who can at least afford it. As always, the Democrats think that the government knows best and is better equipped than the private market to meet demand. They give no consideration to the impacts of significant cost increases, the bill's effect on retail investors, or the actual utility of the information they are requesting and its materiality for informing investment decisions. My friend from Arkansas, Mr. Hill, made this point, but the seminal Supreme Court case that defines the materiality standard was TSC Industries versus Northway. And in that majority opinion, Justice Thurgood Marshall wrote, and it stands repeating, if the standard of materiality is unnecessarily low, not only may the corporation and its management be subjected to liability for insignificant omissions or misstatements, but also management's fear of exposing itself to substantial liability, which may cause it to simply bury shareholders in an avalanche of trivial information, a result that is hardly conducive to informed decision making. So this is not about investor protection. This is about weaponizing federal securities law to discriminate against law-abiding American energy companies. This is an effort to pick winners and the losers in the marketplace by the government. It's an effort for central planning of our economy. It's not about markets. This is about market distortion by the federal government. In committee, I tried to make a common sense change to ensure the bill covers only material information so that investors aren't buried by that avalanche. The majority rejected my amendment, and this shows they are more interested in naming and shaming companies than providing useful information to investors. And Mr. Speaker, and my, my last point is this. The job of the SEC is to protect investors, but this bill would compromise investor returns by elevating non-pecuniary factors above and ahead of financial performance. How do we know this? Because fees for ESG funds are 43% higher than non-ESG funds, and many low-ranked ESG stocks not only outperform top-ranked ESG stocks, they outperform the, outperform the market overall. We must not harm American in investors. We must not harm American retirement savers by subordinating investor returns to, pro to promote non-pecuniary policy objectives like social justice, diversity quotas, and lower carbon emissions. Financial regulation should not be a tool for social, social change. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. Gentleman uh, yields, bounces time. Just gentleman from Michigan Reserves. Reserves.